Hello, and welcome to 20 mods that make Skyrim great again. In this video, we're going to try to bring back that love you had for Skyrim back on 11, 11, 11 when it was first released. And we're going to set a limit on how many mods we're going to use, not only so that this video doesn't end up being an hour long, but also so that you don't end up spending more time modding than actually playing the game. Now, I have taken some liberties with that 20 number, and the reason for this is we're going to have a base category, and this base category are mods that are more like frameworks for other mods, and you're kind of expected to have them on your Skyrim when modding in 2019. These I'm not counting towards the 20 number because I'm not going to cover them very much here. But before we get into that, the first thing you'll need is a mod manager if you don't have one already. And to keep up to date with modern modding methods, you're going to either want Vortex or Mod Organizer 2. I personally use Vortex, but it seems like a lot more people prefer Mod Organizer 2. But let me help you make a decision on this. If you're someone who wants to spend hours modding away, then Mod Organizer 2 might be for you. At the time of recording, it has a bit more features for enthusiasts than Vortex does. However, if you are new to modding or don't care about perfecting your game down to a T and learning these advanced tools, then Vortex might be for you. This is a little bit more user friendly. So now that you have a mod manager, let's get into our base category. The first mod we'll need is Skyrim Script Extender, which expands the scripting functionality of the Skyrim engine for mod authors to use. And we're also going to want SSE Engine Fixes, which fixes a lot of bugs with the Skyrim engine. It'll make your game more stable and allow you to run more mods smoothly. Next up, we have the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, which unlike the last one we looked at, this one fixes issues that are in the actual game. And now for a major UI overhaul with Sky UI. Pretty much everyone has this today too. Here's what the difference looks like. It includes the mod configuration menu, which a lot of mods need. Now we'll get our ENB, which will use photorealistic Tamriel, if you can run it. If you're running on a lower end computer, you might not want to install this. You might want to skip this part. Um, but here are the instructions on how to install it. It also shows you how to calibrate it for different weather mods and the sort. And we're going to want to remember that because we're not going to use the default one, which is natural atmospheric Tamriel, because that mod has issues with fire. We're actually going to use obsidian weathers right here, which um, still looks very good. Next up is a little bug fix for dialogue controls with mouse and keyboard. and. It just makes sure that you don't click the wrong dialogue option on accident. So it's a nice to have. And then we're going to get Papyrus Util SE and Papyrus Extender, which both expand Papyrus functionality for mod authors. They are both frameworks for other mods, including some that we're going to use later on in this video. And along the same lines, we're going to want Hookshare SSE, which I can't really tell you what it does, but some mods require it. And then here's a big one. We need Static Mesh Improvement Mod. You can see the difference here. It makes a lot of things that are flat 3D and it looks really good. And then on top of that, you're gonna to wanna to override it with No Will Skyrim, which is a texture mod. It is a large texture overhaul, which is highly needed because Bethesda didn't recreate all the textures when they made Special Edition. So many look outdated. And we're also going to get a few more texture overhauls, including Underground which overhauls the dungeons and it looks really nice. So you're just gonna overwrite Noble Skyrim when you install this one. All these overwrite static mesh improvement mod, by the way. And then we're also going to get Skyland, which overhauls a lot of the landscapes and you're gonna overwrite Underground and Noble Skyrim with this one. Putting aside textures for a moment, we're going to get Cutting Room Floor, which adds back a crap ton of content that got cut before the game was released. Keep in mind, this one requires a lot of patches. So if you don't want to deal with that, I recommend skipping it. But there are patches already made for most of the things that would conflict with this one. And finally, the last mod in our base category will be Enhanced Textures Detail, which tweaks the way textures are applied to meshes to make them look like they are higher resolution than they really are. It's really cool. When installing, only select the options that are reported to have no known issues. With that covered, let's move on to the mods that I want to showcase in this video. Do you suffer from the bug at the beginning of the game where your cart ride flips out more than Alduin when he first gets out of the time wound? Stolen horse in the halfway to Hammerfell. 
should be storm cloaks in once. Or maybe you don't even have the bug and you're just tired of sitting through the whole thing every time you want to start a new character. Well, if that's you, this is Random Alternate Start Reborn SE or R-A-S-R SE. And what it does is when you start a new game with this mod on, it puts you into this little boxed room and immediately you go into character creation. It skips the cart ride completely, and it also skips all the events that happen after the cart ride up until you escape Helgen from the cave at the end of that sequence of events. This means you'll no longer be role playing as a prisoner who narrowly escaped death, but you will still be the Dragonborn. It does more than just change up the start of the game too though. After you're done naming your character, you'll go into this menu where you get these kits that are your starting class basically kind of reminds me of some older Elder Scrolls games. You can select them to get little descriptions and flavor text about them, and you'll be able to get a general idea of what your starting equipment will be. You can also select a random kit, which will just give you a kit at random. Once you select and confirm your kit, it'll give you some more flavor text about your class that you've chosen. And then another menu will pop up asking you if you want to wait for mods to be configured. And you'll want to do this because not only does it give you time to go into your mod configuration menu and get some of your settings that you want to play with set up, but if these settings are set before you actually spawn into the Skyrim game world, you might actually see less issues with these mods pop up, especially from mods that use scripting to edit leveled lists or apply effects to NPCs. After you've waited the amount of time that you've selected, RASR will go ahead and spawn you into Skyrim's game world, and it will do so by randomly choosing from a list of predefined locations. So every time you start a new game, you will end up somewhere different. Here are just some of the places that I spawned in when creating new characters with this mod on. After you've spawned in, you'll get this quest called Rumors of Dragons, which will take you to Helgen where you can witness the dragon flying away after the attack and thus start the main quest line of Skyrim. Note that you are not required to do this immediately though. So I normally just end up exploring around where RASR spawned me first before even starting the main quest. Next up, we're going to have some new content mods. And for that, I decided to choose one that adds content to Skyrim and one that adds content outside of Skyrim. So here's the one that adds content to Skyrim. This one is Skyrim Sewers, and I chose it because it makes very few edits to the regular world, so it is highly compatible with other mods. So what this mod does is add these vast underground sewer labyrinths. They are interconnected, and sometimes you'll be surprised where you come out at. Sometimes you'll even find NPCs hiding down here. You'll see more clips of me in the sewers while I'm covering other mods in this video. But for the most part, if you want to see what all this mod has to offer, you're just going to have to download it and explore it for yourself. Now let's move on to the new content mod that adds content outside of Skyrim. So this is a really big one, and it's part of a larger project. This mod brings you to Cyrodiil. It's called Beyond Skyrim, Bruma. And it takes you to places from the previous Elder Scrolls game, the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. There's no time travel going on though. This is an entirely new story set in the same time period that Skyrim takes place in. You can freely travel to Cyrodiil from a border gate. Speaking of story, it kind of lacks a main story at the moment because this is more like a preview for one of the Beyond Skyrim team's larger projects, Beyond Skyrim Cyrodiil. This doesn't mean that there aren't lots to do though. There are a ton of little side quests and they're all fully voiced. It is basically a DLC sized mod and I would follow the Beyond Skyrim project if I were you. They eventually plan to cover all of Tamriel. Bonus mod. Bruma was made for the original Skyrim in mind and so the textures aren't really the best and they look very vanilla like and we're using all these texture packs so you might also want to get Bruma Overhaul HD on the Nexus if you want yours to look as good as mine. 
I don't know about you, but something I feel makes games better is just having good overall interactions with the NPCs. Skyrim doesn't quite hit the nail on the head with this one. As you could see there, when I was talking to Ulfred, he was so far away I couldn't even see him. On top of that, some characters are just plain ugly. I'm talking ugly in ways that they're not supposed to be ugly. To solve these two issues, the first mod we're going to need is simple face-to-face -face conversations, Kaiwami. This mod zooms your perspective into whoever you're having a conversation with, just like in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. It makes things feel much more personal, and it's easier to get attached to these characters with this mod on, and that's always a good thing for the story. Now to solve how ugly some of these characters look, we're going to need total character makeover, which mostly changes characters' skin and bodies to give them more of a consistent feel throughout all of Skyrim. It doesn't edit hair, so you can even use your favorite hair retexture with it. Now don't quote me on this because I'm not 100% positive, but I believe I've noticed some changes with this mod on in Bruma, so I think it even affects some NPCs added by mods. Speaking of NPCs and story, let's lightly touch on questing. So, questing in Skyrim is really great actually. There's just one minor thing that I get annoyed with, and that is these radiant quests that are mostly randomly generated, and they don't really have much story to them. A lot of them are repeatable too, and that just gets annoying repeating quests that you've already done. The point of Radiant Quest is to get you to explore places that you haven't been yet, but sometimes it brings you to a place that you've already cleared out, and when it does this, it respawns enemies there and you gotta re-clear the whole thing out again. This wouldn't be annoying if the game told you which quests are Radiant Quests, that way you could choose to avoid them if you want to. It's time to shill my own mod again. This is Radiant Quest Marker SE, and it does just that. It works by adding Radiant to the beginning of quest titles in your quest journal, and it also moves them to the miscellaneous section to get them out of the way of your more important quests. Some of you might have heard of my Radiant Quest Marker mod for Fallout 4. And don't get me wrong, the Radiant Quests in Fallout 4 are a lot more annoying than they are in Skyrim. But this still makes a difference here. With it on, you'll find yourself wasting less time on repeating quests you didn't even know are repeating. Another mod that goes well with Radiant Quest Marker SE is No Cell Respawn. No Cell Respawn prevents any other instances of NPCs or loot respawning. It's more realistic, and so it is another mod that saves you from the tedium of clearing out a dungeon that you've already cleared out. I was showing some combat a moment ago. That means it's time to talk about combat mods. So on the screen now is gameplay with all combat mods turned off. There are a few problems with it. One, it's dated. Two, it's too easy. Three, it doesn't look great. And four, the physics are kind of jank, as you can see here. Let's start with mods that overhaul the actual combat, and then we'll get to mods that overhaul the way combat looks to make it visually appealing. As you can see here with the vanilla combat, there's some weirdness going on when trying to break an opponent's block, especially with a shield. I just keep hitting over and over again and doing the same animation, while it still deals damage. It's just really weird. And then here you have the same thing going on, but not with a shield. You also might notice the blood coming out isn't very brutal, it's just like little splats here and there. It doesn't feel very satisfying. I'm also just mowing through these guys like it's nothing. There's little to no skill involved in this. You could up the difficulty of the game itself, but that's not really going to change the skill factor in combat. It'll still feel for the most part unsatisfying. Vanilla Skyrim also has these kill moves, but there aren't that many of them and a lot of them play over and over again like this one. So let's redo this same fight, but with mods on. The main combat overhaul that we'll be using is called Vigor, and it does many things. One of the main things though is better positional combat. So now instead of just spam attacking your enemies, you're going to have to choose where you hit them a little more. This will avoid weird situations like that one in the first bit of gameplay from Vanilla I showed you, where I was able to kill that bandit just by spam attacking their shield. Instead of doing health damage while attacking a shield, it'll do stamina damage now. This is much more fair and it makes the combat more difficult. 
It also adds real parrying, potions for NPCs, and an injury system. Overall, it makes the game harder, but in a good way. Just a note though, you'll have to enable it in the MCM menu before it even takes effect, and you'll also want to disable the stamina actions option, because it's more annoying than it is fun. The next mod that affects combat just affects timing, really. It's called TK Hit Stop SE, and what it does is when you hit an enemy with a weapon, it slows down the swing as your blade passes through flesh and bone. Unlike in vanilla, where when you're slicing your blade through an enemy, it just acts as if you're slicing through air. Unlike Vigor, this is just a slight change, but it makes all the difference. Now let's talk about mods that enhance the visuals while in combat. Unlike Skyrim's cousin, Fallout 4, which has tons of gore, Skyrim really doesn't have any even though it's a dark M-rated game with a mature story. There is a mod for old Skyrim, Deadly Mutilation, that adds gore, but it doesn't work with all armor mods and there's a few finicky bugs that it still has to this day, even when ported over to SSE. So instead of adding gore, we're going to use other methods to make the game appear more brutal. The first here is enhanced blood textures. As you can see, the blood pools are way bigger than they are in vanilla. The blood is also a higher resolution all around. It also adds new wounds. The next mod we'll use is XP32 Maximum Skeleton Special Extended, or XPM SSE. And what this does is add the effects from the mod Realistic Ragdolls and Force, but without that mod. Realistic Ragdolls and Force has a bug with an any edit that we're going to use in this guide. XPM SSC does more than that, but this is the part we're using it for. It's a requirement for a crap ton of other mods as well, so it's good to have. As you can probably tell from the name of the mod it's replacing in this video, XPM SSE makes it so that your opponents don't go flying unrealistically away from you when you kill them. Additionally, to force your enemies to ragdoll all the time, you'll want no spinning death animation. This fight is over, but I'm not done enhancing the visuals in combat. This next mod is called Frozen Electrocuted Combustion. And what it does is play effects on your enemies when you kill them with fire, ice, electricity, and poison. Using magic to fry your enemy, turn them into ice cubes, or electrocute them has never felt so satisfying. Bonus mod. Also get deadly spell impacts to retexture the spots where your spells hit to make them look way better. Finally, remember how I talked about Skyrim playing the same kill move animations over and over and over again? Well, there's a mod to fix that. It's called Violins. It lets you customize your kill moves down to a T using the mod configuration menu. Its configuration is leagues better than vanilla right off the bat, so you can install it and not even mess with it if you don't want to. Oh, did I mention? It's basically cutting room floor for kill moves. It adds all the unused ones back to the game. But what's the point of making combat look good if the rest of the game doesn't? Let's get into environment mods. Have you ever noticed how flat and ugly the roads in Skyrim look? Plus, you have to look at them all the time. So I highly recommend this mod. It's called Blended Roads. And it retextures the roads to make the rocks stick out more. It's a cool effect. If you don't like how much they stick out though, you can use the default option when installing. I didn't use that though. I used the really blended roads option, which makes them stick out as much as you see here. You may have also noticed lanterns on the sides of roads in the previous videos. This is a mod called Lanterns of Skyrim, and it really makes gameplay at night much nicer, especially because our ENB and weather mod will make things darker than vanilla at night, and it's harder to see. So it's always cool to play at night and see lanterns off in the distance to light the way. It even has a mod configuration menu now where you can turn off lanterns if they conflict with some of your other mods. Let's quickly mention three bonus mods related to this one. The first is Bruma Lanterns, which adds lanterns to Bruma. However, the lanterns it adds are not the same as the ones added by Lanterns of Skyrim, so they can look a little out of place. So that's why you'll also want Bruma Lanterns, Lanterns of Skyrim patch made by me, which just changes the mesh to match Lanterns of Skyrim. It does have some limitations though, for example, the lanterns will not swing. Another mod that goes well with Lanterns of Skyrim is Darker Nights. Only use it if you are not satisfied with how dark your nights are with the E and B and the weather mod on. Finally, Foliage needs an overhaul. The footage here is without any Foliage mods on. 
It's just kind of plain if you ask me. That's why we need simply bigger trees, which makes the trees in Skyrim huge. Skyrim is this fantasy world and this really adds another layer of fantastical elements to the game. It's time for some more bonus mods because above you're not seeing footage of just simply bigger trees enabled. You're seeing footage with realistic aspen trees and 3D plants also installed. Now we're on to our final category, general gameplay improvements. Let's start this off with audiobooks of Skyrim. With this mod on, when you open a book in Skyrim, you'll have the option for it to be read to you. Darkest darkness. In Morrowind, both worshippers and sorcerers summon Lesser Daedra. And bone Daedra if while you're listening you want to stop the audio, all Most you have to do is open a book and then choose Stop Current Chief Audio. Day. This mod covers most books and even some notes in the vanilla game. The only downside to this mod really is when you're in an area that has a lot of reverb because unfortunately sound effects are applied to the audiobooks, which means sometimes you can struggle to hear them. You might have noticed that also these books are glowing. This is unread books glow. What it does is it makes all books in the game glow at the start of your playthrough. And when you read one, it turns off glow for every copy of that book in your game world. So you can easily tell just by looking at a book if you've read it or not. It also makes skill books glow a different color so you can easily tell them apart from the other ones just by looking at them. Last but not least, we have a mod you've seen at various points throughout the video. It's called Quick Loot RE, and it adds Fallout 4's looting system to Skyrim. Now instead of opening a container or a dead body to search it, all you have to do is look at it and select what you want to take. This is one I honestly can't play without anymore. That's it for mods, but I do have a couple of any edits for you. Any files are where you can change settings to the game that aren't officially supported in any of the game's menus. To make any editing easy, we're going to use a tool called Beth I and I. It comes with its own presets, which are superior to the ones included with the game by default. I chose the Ultra one because my computer can handle it, but the other ones are good too. I also recommend using the recommended tweaks and NPCs use ammo, which makes NPCs use arrows to shoot you and when they run out they have to come melee you. You can also add your custom settings here. The one I want to mention has been labeled NPC Havoc Hit, which changes it so body parts are reactive when you hit them. This is that edit I was talking about earlier that is incompatible with realistic ragdolls and force. Think Topa Boss 911 on the Nexus for this information. The values in his comment work really well. Lastly, you'll want to finalize your load order. You'll start by sorting your plugins. After that, there are some tools you might want to run, like SSE Edit, Didn't Do Lod, wire bash, etc. I'll put another video up shortly about how I finalize my load order in case you're interested. But that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Also, let me know what else you'd like to see on my channel. I've had fun making these mod videos, so expect more in the future. Peace.